This is the uh, AP review questions for the Chapter 17 test. In the previous one, we talked about Chapter 16, which included acids and bases. Here, we're doing Chapter 17, which adds acids and bases together to create uh, some sort of a neutralization scenario. Okay, so question one says, when 200 mils of a 2 molar sodium hydroxide solution, which is a base, is added to 500 mils of 1 molar HCl solution, the pH of the resulting mixture is closest to. So we're adding an acid, this is a strong, uh, I'm sorry, a base, which is a strong base, to an acid, which is a strong acid. They will neutralize each other. So this is like a titration. Let's see how much of what will be left over. So again, you can't use the calculator on the multiple choice section of the AP exam, so we'll have to do this by hand. What we want to get is the moles of this base, and let's multiply the liters by the molarity, because molarity, remember, is moles per liter, which means moles is molarity times liter. So we have 0.2 multiplied by 2. 0.2 times 2 is 0.4. So we have 0.4 of our base, 0.4 moles of the base. If we get the acid, we have 0.5 multiplied by 1, which gives you exactly right, 0.5. So what we see is we got ourselves more acid than base. In fact, when the two neutralize each other, they will cancel each other out, and you'll end up with 0.1 mole of acid. Now, in order to get the pH, remember pH is the negative log of the concentration of the H+. Plus. So we have 0.1 moles of the acid. We have to divide that, 0.1, we have to divide it by the total liters. The total liters in this case would be, looks like we've added 500 mils to 200 mils, would be 700 mils, so 0.7. So what we see here is that our concentration, now we may not know exactly what 0.1 divided by 0.7 is, but we can realize that it's going to be a little higher than 0.1 because we're dividing by less than uh, a smaller number, essentially, less than 1. So, in fact, dividing by 0.7 is dividing by 7 tenths, which means by mul it's multiplying by 10 sevenths, multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's 0.1 times 10 sevenths. So you actually, the 0.1 becomes higher. Uh, you can try to calculate this out, or you can say it's a little higher than, uh, it's a bit greater than 0.1. Because to get the pH, we have to negative log this number. Well, if we were to negative log uh, if we were neg to negative log 0.1, we would get 1 because the negative log of a number is simply of 0.1 is the same thing of negative log uh, of uh, 10 to the negative 1, which means we're just pulling out the power. So we're, we're a little above 1, which means our pH is going to be uh, around 1, essentially. That, that's the whole point. Uh, what we're seeing here is that we're close to a pH of 1. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, question 2. Let's clear it up. It says, a solution containing HCl and the weak acid HClO2 has a pH of 2.4. Enough potassium hydroxide, the strong base, is added to the solution to increase the pH to 10.5. The amount of which of the following species increases as the KOH is added. So we're asking what goes up. Now, Cl minus won't increase because Cl minus came from a strong acid. A strong acid is already dissociated completely, so the amount, C, uh, amount of Cl minus is the same throughout the whole thing. It's a spectator ion, but it doesn't increase. Now, the H plus actually decreases because we're neutralizing an acid because the pH is going up, so the H plus actually goes down as we're titrating it. ClO2 minus actually is the correct answer because, uh, well, here, let's take a quick look at HClO2. HClO2, because it's a weak acid, uh, is actually not increasing. Uh, HClO2, as the procedure is going on, here is the dissociation, ClO2 minus. At the beginning of it, because it's a weak acid, most of it is the acid, and we have very little of the conjugate base in H+. But as it's being neutralized, the um, HClO2 minus is being eaten away at. So it actually decreases. However, 
as this decreases, as this is being eaten away at, we actually increase this because HClO2 is a bit neutralized and forms automatically some of this conjugate. So that's why ClO2 minus actually increases. So the answer is C. Yep. Let's lower it just a bit. A solution is prepared by adding 100 mils of one molar hydro uh, or acetic acid, this is a weak acid, HC2H3O2, to one molar uh, sodium acetate. Now what we see here is we see a weak acid and its conjugate base. So what we're thinking of is a buffer. Right away we think we're thinking of having a buffer. The solution is stirred and its pH is measured to be 473. After three drops of one molar HCl are added to the solution, the pH of the solution is measured and is still 4.73. Which of the following equations represents the chemical reaction that accounts for the fact that the acid is being added but there's no detectable change in pH? So if we have a buffer, remember a buffer is we have this guy in solution and we have a bunch of his conjugate base which is C2H3O2 minus. We have a bunch of him and a bunch of his conjugate base. So when we add an acid, the base portion, this is the original weak acid, this is the conjugate base, Remember, the base portion of the buffer neutralizes the acid. So this substance right here is what neutralizes the acid. So our reaction should be between this acetate ion and H+, or H3O+. Sometimes H+, is represented as H3O+. So what we're seeing is this equation here. We're seeing an acid being added to our conjugate base, forming the acetate again and back to water. So this is the reaction. This is how the buffer uh, neutralizes the acid. Uh, this one here actually would be how the buffer neutralizes the base if we were to add the base, is the idea. Okay, number five says a 50 mil sample of an acid of an unknown molarity. We actually need to uh, use the next graph for this. So let's pull it up, there it is. And we are, uh, we have some sort of acid is being titrated and pH of the resulting solution is measured with pH meter and uh, as a function of the volume added of sodium hydroxide. So we have ourselves a pH curve and we're asked some questions about pH curve. Again, we're titrating a, a weak acid. That's where we're beginning at a low pH. With a strong base, pH goes up. Remember then we have this equilibrium, uh, not equilibrium, but equivalence point. This is the equivalence point in the middle. And then as we keep titrating, we become, we become basic. So at point R in the titration, which of the following species has the highest concentration? Here is point R. Now at point R, we still have a lot of the weak acid. Remember the HA, the weak acid, is being titrated. And here is its equilibrium setup. So we have a lot of it to begin with, not much of this. But as we're titrating it, we're removing HA and neutralizing it. So which has the highest concentration since we are uh, just into the titration itself we still have a lot of HA in the solution not a lot of A- minus has been formed some has been formed but we still have a lot of HA uh, we still have uh, some H3O plus now H3O plus is the same thing as H plus here and not a lot of OH- minus. So it's between HA and H3O+, which has the higher concentration? Well, we have more HA because it's a weak acid, so it does produce some H+, but not much. If we had a strong acid, then H3O+, would win. Because we have a weak acid, it's the weak acid that's in there still, undissociated or not very dissociated. So A would be the answer. Number five asks, at which point in the titration curve is A- minus closest to that, close to twice that of HA? A minus closest to twice that of HA. Well, A minus is the conjugate it forms when you neutralize it. So right in the middle of it right here is actually where you have equal amounts of HA and A minus. So they are equal at, at this uh, half point to the titration. Notice uh, this point is when the titration is finished. This is where we begin. So halfway there and the half point, we actually have equal amounts of both of them which means if we want to uh, have twice as much uh, A minus, we are three quarters of the point right here. So right here, we have two times 
as much a minus as we have h a, so which is point t. I know this is uh, com maybe confusing, so think through it. Uh, I think we need to clean up a bit. 6 says, which of the following is the best particulate representation of the species other than water that are present at significant concentrations at point U? Now, point U is when the titration has finished, essentially. So all of our HA has been reacted. There is no more HA left. What we have left, though, is whatever it neutralized into, which is A minus. So which of these best represents it? Well, it looks like, uh, see if we can pull it up just a bit for ease of uh, viewing. It looks like we have, so we shouldn't have any HA left, so this is out because HA has been neutralized completely at the end of the neutralization, and this one is out. We shouldn't have any HA left. This one, however, shows some A minus. This one shows A minus very well. However, because we are at the uh, high pH in the titration curve, we're pretty high up there, we have a bunch of OH minus in the solution. So we should choose B because B is the one that shows some OH minus. This one's out because it doesn't show any OH minus. This would be what would be at the equivalence point. So A is actually at the equivalence point, the point at which all the acid has been neutralized. So all you have is the conjugate base and some sodium ion as a spectator ion having, uh, you know, floating around. Good. This very last question actually refers not to acids and bases, but to KSP, which we mentioned at the end of the chapter. So here it says, uh, well, actually it combines acids and bases with insoluble products. So it says, for which salt should the aqueous solubility be most sensitive to pH? Now what this is referring to is the fact that many salts have an anion that's the conjugate base of a previous acid. And if it's a conjugate base, then it will react with the acid. So what we're asking is which of these solutions really has a big conjugate base. Now, the way to figure this out is that nitrate originally came from nitric acid. In other words, it's the conjugate base. Nitrate is the conjugate base of nitric acid, which means it's an extremely weak base. Actually, it's so weak it's a non-base. Since it came from a very strong acid, this is strong, from a strong acid, it's going to be a non-base. Same thing for calcium chloride. Chloride came from HCl, a strong acid. So its base, conjugate base, is going to be a non-base. Same thing with calcium bromide. It came from HBr. So it's going to be a non-base. Same thing with calcium iodide, HI. Incidentally, these are all strong acids, strong acid, strong acid. HF, however, is a weak acid. And a weak acid has a conjugate base, F minus in this case, that is a weak base. So since F minus is a weak base, it will interact with an acid and be sensitive to pH. In fact, a calcium fluoride is uh, not uh, or not very soluble, or many of these are not very soluble. Uh, however, you can make them more soluble by adding an acid, which then neutralizes this base, or the conjugate base neutralizes the acid. Hopefully that made sense, and uh, let's uh, think through these, pause them, look through them. Uh, these will show up on uh, my test.